Sami, what was your impression from the seminar on Israel and the moral abyss? The discussions at Birzeit University were intense, especially around Israel's unprecedented actions in Gaza. What was your take on the key points raised? Peter, I found the seminar incredibly insightful. The papers presented did an excellent job of framing Israel's recent actions within a broader historical and theoretical context. One of the speakers, Professor George Jekaman, went beyond just military strategies to delve into the psychological and ideological shifts within Israeli society. As the speaker pointed out, what Israel did as a reaction to the October 7th attack requires explanation, given that what they did was unprecedented in all its wars on Gaza up to this point. Absolutely, the notion of an existential threat being used as a defense mechanism really stood out to me. How do you see this concept fitting into the broader discourse on colonial and race studies? That's a great question, Peter. The idea of an existential threat is deeply entwined with the colonial mindset. Franz Fanon, in his seminal work, The Wretched of the Earth, talks about how colonial powers dehumanize the colonized to justify their domination and violence. This dehumanization process creates a perpetual state of fear and paranoia within the colonizer, which then rationalizes further acts of violence. The speaker mentioned that, directly after the October 7th attack, there was widespread talk about Israel experiencing a general sense of existential threat, which is a classic example of this mindset. So you're saying that Israel's portrayal of an existential threat is similar to the colonial fear of the other? Exactly. Edward Said's concept of Orientalism also comes into play here. He argued that the West constructed an image of the East as inherently dangerous and inferior, which justified colonial rule. Israel's narrative around Gaza employs a similar logic, portraying Palestinians as a monolithic threat to justify extreme measures. The speaker even highlighted that this narrative is used to frame Palestinians as Nazis, with Israeli figures like Smotrich saying, there are two million Nazis in Gaza. The paper mentioned the Israeli belief that no one is innocent in Gaza. This reminded me of the collective punishment often seen in colonial regimes. What are your thoughts on this? You're spot on, Peter. Collective punishment is a hallmark of colonial control. It seeks to suppress any resistance by punishing the entire community, thereby breaking their spirit. Ilan Pape, an Israeli new historian, has extensively documented how this tactic has been used throughout Israel's history, not just in Gaza, but also in the West Bank and during the Nakba. The speaker noted, the bloodshed of the genocide continued even after the failure of the displacement and ethnic cleansing effort became apparent. It's chilling to see these patterns repeated. The speaker also touched on the psychological aspects within Israeli society, particularly the idea of denial and the lack of interest in the details of the genocide. How does this fit into our understanding of race studies? He describes this denial as a state of collective amnesia, which is often seen in societies built on racial hierarchies. In race studies, this denial serves to maintain the status quo by ignoring the systemic injustices that underpin societal structures. It's a defense mechanism that allows individuals to absolve themselves of responsibility for the ongoing oppression. The speaker mentioned that the general public in Israel shows no interest in knowing any details about the genocide in Gaza and an unwillingness to know as well. The parallel between denial in race studies and what's happening in Israel is quite stark. The speaker also referenced the International Court of Justice's opinion on the illegality of settlements. How does this international perspective influence the local narratives? International law and global opinion play a significant role. Edward Said often emphasized the importance of global solidarity in the Palestinian struggle. Elon Pape and other Israeli new historians argue that international pressure is crucial in challenging Israel's actions and narratives. The ICJ's opinion adds a layer of legal legitimacy to the claims against the settlements, which can galvanize global support and pressure Israel to change its policies. The speaker stressed that the ICJ's opinion on the illegality of settlements and its occupation of the West Bank, including East Jerusalem and the Gaza Strip, considering these areas as a single unit, is a critical component of this pressure. The seminar also touched on Zeev Jabotinsky's revisionist Zionism. How do his ideas influence current Israeli policies? Jabotinsky's revisionist Zionism 
is central to understanding current Israeli policies. He advocated for an iron wall approach, believing that only through overwhelming strength could Jews secure their state. This idea has permeated Israeli strategic thinking, emphasizing military dominance and preemptive strikes to maintain security. The speaker mentioned that Israel aims to be stronger than any force in its regional surroundings, especially if it is Arab or hostile, reflecting Jabotinsky's influence. This mindset justifies extreme measures in the name of security and deterrence. The seminar made me think about Hannah Arendt's work, especially concepts like power, judgment, and evil. How do these ideas relate to the situation in Gaza? Hannah Arendt's ideas are very relevant here. In The Origins of Totalitarianism, she discusses how totalitarian regimes use ideology to justify their actions often leading to what she calls the banality of evil. This concept helps explain how ordinary people can commit heinous acts without feeling guilty because they believe they are acting in accordance with a higher ideology. The speaker's point about the lack of interest in the genocide details among the Israeli public can be seen as a form of Arendt's denial, a defense mechanism to avoid facing the moral implications of their actions. Arendt also talks about the importance of judgment and the role of the shared ethical world. How does this apply here? Arendt's concept of judgment is crucial for understanding the broader implications of the conflict. Judgment involves the ability to think from the perspective of others, which is essential for moral and ethical decision-making. The speaker highlighted that the continuous reference to an existential threat prevents Israelis from engaging in this kind of empathetic judgment thus perpetuating the cycle of violence. Arendt also emphasized the shared ethical world, which is being eroded in this context. The ICJ's opinions and international solidarity efforts aim to rebuild this shared ethical framework, challenging Israel's actions and narratives. It seems like there's a complex interplay of local and global dynamics at work. Finally, how do you see the future of Palestinian resistance in light of these discussions? The future of Palestinian resistance, I believe, lies in a combination of local resilience and international solidarity. Fanon's ideas about decolonization stress the importance of reclaiming self-determination and identity. Similarly, Said's advocacy for cultural resistance highlights the power of narrative and representation. By continuing to expose the realities on the ground and connecting them with global movements for justice, Palestinians can strengthen their cause. Additionally, the works of Papa and other historians help in dismantling the myths that sustain the occupation. The speaker concluded by emphasizing, understanding the reasons for the genocide war requires this explanation because the madness of this savagery goes beyond the scope of the quest to restore deterrence power or the desire for revenge. Sammy, your insights have been incredibly enlightening. The seminar has indeed opened up a lot of avenues for thought and action. I look forward to our next discussion. Likewise, Peter. These conversations are crucial in understanding and challenging the ongoing injustices. Until next time.